Hello, hello. Welcome to Siege Budget Brews. I'm Tim. And I'm Brandon. Hey, Brandon. How you doing tonight? I'm doing great. How are you doing, Tim? I'm good, dude. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Just uh, got back from work. A little busy today. We got a couple people off this week. You know, how's that? How's that hunt going for you, man? It's going great. I'm looking. <laughs> hey, if anybody lives in the Dallas area, you need some IT work. <laughs> I, I'm not kidding. Oh God! Okay. <laughs> so we're talking about Malcolm and Tana today, right? Yes, yes. Now that I'm done shilling you, so without further ado, I think I'll get into it. This is a deck that has been kind of performing relatively well. Uh, the deck is made by Zerob. He's got at least two final pods that I can think of off the top of my head, and at least one or two more kind of top eight, top sixteen with it. So it's this deck has been running really hot. Uh, it's actually appeared probably six times in the finals pods and two of them are his 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 alone so it's a it's a teamer deck you have blue green red you can do things like leverage dockside really well you get access to Kinnon. but what makes this great this deck really nice is that you have access to a one card win con so if you have malcolm in play uh, Malcolm reads uh, one blue, two colorless, two, two flyer that whenever one or more pirates you control damages an opponent, you create a treasure. Okay. So kind of the way it works is that you get Malcolm out and then you Eldritch Evolution, one of your dorks into Glenhorn Buccaneer or you Neoform a two drop into Glenhorn Buccaneer. It has haste. You go to combat, you pay the two, you discard a card. And then you'll draw a card. So as long as you have seven cards in hand, you can keep doing this over and over and over again because Glenhorn will deal one damage to all three of your opponents, thus netting you one treasure each iteration. And then with one person's life total is lower, most of the time you have enough to kind of just to just kind of do it, like to keep repeating that process. Uh so so as long as you can initially initial the trigger with Malcolm out, you generate the three treasures. You can just kind of keep repeating that process till everybody's dead because Malcolm importantly reads not combat damage, but just any damage. So the Buccaneer trigger makes three treasures or two treasures, it makes one treasure for each opponent. And since you're in green, you have access to creature tutors, so it gives you a very easy way to get to it. Uh, furthermore, you can leverage curiosity effects very well also. With, like, say, Glenhorn Buccaneer deals damage, you, you go to combat, you do the same thing even if you don't have Malcolm out, and you will discard a card, draw three, and you can keep pumping mana into that netting cards, and as long as you have more than seven cards and you go to your end step, then you can enter like a kind of like a it's it's a like you basically discard down to seven, you deal the three damage, the curiosity causes you to deal three, draw three more, put you back to discard, rinse, repeat till everybody's dead. And so your like your your main plan is your commander plus Glenhorn. Your backup plan is like Glenhorn plus like curiosity effect. Then the other thing that's nice is with Tana, not only does Tana flood the board with like one ones, but she which helps you power cradle, but she also can be Eldritch evolutioned into Niv Parun. So Eldritch Evolution, for those of you who don't know, is two green and a colorless, you sack a creature, and then you search your library for a creature card with X mana value plus or less, where X is 2 plus the CMC of the sacrifice creature. So if you sack Tana, you get 4 plus the 2 for the uh, Eldritch Evolution, that gets 6. And then that gives you the, the Niv Parun. Niv Parun is kind of a house by himself. And then if you can, again, land a Curiosity effect on it, which the deck is running Tandem Lookout. It is also running Keen Sense. Some versions will run Curiosity. Some will run Ophidian Eye. Uh, Z-Rob is not. And then that gives you, again, an, another two-card 
instant win essentially because once Niv, once Niv deals a point of damage, you shoot somebody's face, you draw another card, you shoot somebody's face, you draw another card, boom, 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 boom till everybody's dead. And then if you have to, you just twister your library back in and start the chain again because the twister draws you seven more cards. That's a pretty compact, like, concise win con. Mm -hmm. Then, on top of that, you get Twin Flame and Dual Caster Mage. So since you're in blue, green, red, you can green will give you access to finding the Dual Caster Mage, and blue will give you access to finding the Twin Flame pretty reliably. Because you play things like Spellseeker, you play Mystical Tutor, Gamble... All of those things will help you find the Twin Flame. And then you have your Finale, your Eldritch Evolution. You've got some builds are running Court of Calling, just like Rob is, to kind of help you fight through, like help you land the, the, this other, this alternate combo pretty easily. And then you just got like your normal, like Grixis things like SWAT, Swirling Mist. You know, you've got a nice stack interaction suite with like Mana Drain, Force of Will, Fluster, Fierce, Delay. You play a Braid, which again is kind of good. Like it pretty much answers most things. And I then do want to can... say, mm -hmm. I'm actually really, really surprised that this deck, uh, that we're going over this deck, mainly because I remember when this, when Malcolm was first teased, nobody thought it was going to go anywhere. So it's nice to see that they're wrong, you know? Yeah. Well, and kind of that was the thing was like, one, they've printed a few more good cards for it since Malcolm was printed. The folks over on the Malcolm Discord have kind of put a lot of work in. Uh, shout out to Vasher and Z-Rob in particular. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm, I know there's many more, but those are the two I know the best. Kind of helped... You know, I mean, you've got Ragavan that just came out last summer. Like, that was after the printing... You got now you have professional face breaker as another way to kind of kind of help get things going. And all of these lines, it, it just kind of it, it's kind of one of those things where like everything kind of came together. It, it became kind of more of a sum of its parts. Yeah, because a lot of the tech has always been there. It, it's just more of a matter of of assembling it in the proper configuration. And obviously there's flex slots and variations between lists. Uh, in fact, on uh, the DDB, the deck list database, there's a, not our website, but uh, the deck, the CDH deck list database. Uh, there's a different tropical Malcolm list that has some variation versus C Rob's list. I just personally like this list a lot. I've seen it do well and, and it's a really tight list, uh, but there are some flex slots. I don't know all of those off the top of my head. I just kind of know the basics. I haven't played a ton of games with the deck, but I own every card for it. That's the other thing. This is one of those decks that like kind of once you have like a pretty decently sized CDH collection, you probably have most of this laying around anyway. And it does budget ties relatively well because a lot of the tutors, like a lot of the money in this deck actually comes from stuff like Ragavan, uh, Time Twister, the Dual Lands, obviously, Cradle. The the like the the interaction suite, uh, the the some of the more expensive rocks, but but again, like you can kind of scale this down to like five hundred and and kind of upgrade as you go. But the core combo pieces and, so, and most of the basic tutors are not super expensive. The only one that's really expensive is uh, Survival of the Fittest. It's a good piece. I just wouldn't consider it like I wouldn't it's consider a it. Piece. Well, it's not a tertiary piece. It is one of the better tutors, but for the price, if you were to budgetize it, yeah. I think that it's not like as integral. If you have it, it's definitely should be playing it in a budgetless environment. But it's again, it's just not something that has to be there for for the deck to function at least at a reasonable, like basic performance level. I mean, you also get to play like Boseju like, and Odawaro if you want. So you just get kind of all the things. Mm. I, I And I just really feel like, I mean, it's been doing really well. And I, I think that the basic lines are pretty easy to pick up. Um, anything, any questions you got? Because I know you're not super familiar with this list. Yeah. Um, 
I mean, I, I built, I built a Malcolm tunnel list before, but this is definitely on a, I, one, I didn't play it much. And two, this is definitely on a much higher playing field that I'm used to mm-hmm. with this deck. So, um, let me, let me go over, let me see if there's anything that I'm specifically confused about. It all looks relatively fair. Like I, I have an understanding of it already, like a, a very basic understanding. Yeah. Like a baseline. And everything I'm looking at, it, it just makes sense. It just makes mm-hmm. it better. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and some of the backup lines and navigating the interaction is where all the skill comes in, but assembling the basic game plan and like getting a basic mulligans kind of aren't necessarily like super difficult, uh, but definitely kind of, it will grow with you as, as you do with, as a player with the deck. I mean, it's just got, this deck really has all the parts yeah. and, and it's doing really well. So can I just say, I'm glad that it's getting tops when it's running Neoform and Eldritch Evolution, because I think both of those really deserve recognition. They're super good for their price. I mean, and they're they're like actually, so I mean, there's like all of the Evolution builds all run both of those. Yeah. Like a lot of the Thrasios Timna builds are on them now too. Pretty much any deck running blue-green is running at least one of them, if not both. Yeah. So, well, all right, man. I, I think we've kind of gone over the basics. I think we've shilled the deck, um, given everybody like the pep talk of why they should play it. Honestly, I don't really have any downside for the build. Like you've got creature removal, you've got artifact removal, you've got counter spells. I would I say know. it has its own its own like problems in terms of like what other people are playing, but the build itself is extremely solid for sure. Even that it navigates stacks really well. Mm-hmm. Because Tana can just flood the board, you got Toski to give you the card draw, and then you just jam a Niv and just murder everything. I- I'm I'm really high on this list right now. Okay, well then I guess we will just get go ahead and get a skedaddling. How's that sound? Sounds good. Again, if you like what we're doing, you want to support us, please hit that like, share, subscribe. Check out our Patreon. Links will all be in the description, as well as links to the website, to the Discord. If you got some comments. Please leave them below, questions, whatever you got. We want to hear from you. We want to interact with you. And everybody, have a great night. Bye. Bye.